Hey, what's going on, guys? It's uh, Travis here with the uh, Colorado or Colorado Fly Fisherman. Um, wanted just to talk a little bit about uh, Britannomyces. Um, maybe dispel some of the common known myths about it. Um, just a basic 101, quick whatever you can do in like nine, seven, eight minutes uh, overview. There's a lot of information out there about Brett. Um, I'd suggest if you want to get really into it. Google uh, the Petranomyces Petra project. Um, there's also some really cool forums, um, some beer um, related uh, blogs like uh, the Mad Fermentationist. Uh, a guy named is it Levi Funk, he has a good one. He does a lot of wild ales and Brett beers. Um, I'll put some links in the description of, uh, of here. Um, there's some good stuff on the forums of Homebrew Talk and stuff like that. Um, and some, some, uh, you know, homebrew myths too out there. But um, first I'll just go over what is Britannomyces. Um, Britannomyces is a yeast, it's not a bacteria. Um, it's considered, I mean, I call it a wild yeast. Um, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely like a, like when they do lambics, like an open fermentation, Brett somehow gets in there. So it's kind of like a wild yeast, you know, Britannomyces is floating around you know, probably everywhere. But um, it is a different type of yeast than the Saccharomyces, which is your uh, ale and lager yeast. Um, it works a little bit differently, but for the most part, it's extremely similar to those two yeasts. In fact, um, everything I've read says, basically treat it like a lager yeast as far as cell counts. Um, you need a big, and this is for 100% Brett beers, by the way. Um, we'll talk about uh, when you use Brett and Saccharomyces together, but for right now we're talking about 100% Brett beers. Um, yeah, so everything I've said, or everything I've read um, and have experienced is that uh, Brett likes um, oxygen, um, it, just like Saccharomyces. So if you're building up, say, a smack pack of, uh, um, of Brett, uh, you know, put it on your stir plate like you would normal ale yeast. Um, one thing I did read and did find out that it, it does grow at a lot, at a slower rate. I would say it grows at about a fourth of the rate of a Saccharomyces. So let's say you're going to do a starter. Um, I would do at least a week um, where, you know, a normal ale yeast is 24 hours, maybe a little longer or less. So it definitely does grow slower than Saccharomyces. Um, Where to use it? Um, well, you can pretty much use it anywhere. 100% um, Brett beers are, are somewhat hard to find, I'd say. Um, there's more of them coming about. Uh, Cricket Stave does all their beers, or not all, but most of their Brett beers. Um, there's a few other ones, like Yo Mama Bretta, I think was 100% Brett. I never had any of those. Um, my Brett Coconut IPA was done with uh, a Hop Savant. Um, it took me two weeks to grow up. Uh, the dregs from a bottle and I still don't think I pitched quite enough I did like a 400 mil starter in with the uh, the dregs into that and then did another 16 to 2000 mil starter and it took two weeks I mean you wouldn't see any activity for like four days you'd see activity but um yeah so you can use it in um, just 100% um, of the yeast is Britannomyces and it ferments this very similar to Saccharomyces just at a slower rate. Um, I pitched a, what I thought was a pretty big starter into a five gallon batch and I didn't see any activity for four days. So if that kind of gives you an idea and it took about a month for it to finish out. Um, one one kind of misnomer uh, about 100% Brett beers, we're still talking about just 100% Brett in a beer, is that they finish super uh, they attenuate super far, like in a final gravity, and that's not uh, not the case. Uh, this beer actually finished out at 10:12. It stayed at 10:12 for like two weeks, and I went went ahead and kegged it. See uh, here. So different types of Brett. Um, I've not done a bunch of. I've only done one Brett beer. I've uh, tasted a few different Brett beers. And as far as I have read, most of the stuff I'm just regurgitating through hours and hours of reading. Um, but the different types, 
I guess Brettanomyces is very similar to Saccharomyces in the fact that, you know, there's just there's tons of different varieties. The difference is is that uh, unlike Saccharomyces, where you know White Labs probably puts out 30 different types of Saccharomyces, you know, Belgians, loggers, ALEs, all these, you know, that probably have any, you know, 30 different kinds. Um, the big yeast companies really only put out, you know, a handful, maybe 10 at most, 10 uh, different types of uh, Brettanomyces. Um, so there are a few guys out there that are harvesting Brett from like bottles of Cantillon and different areas and they have, you know, they have 30 different yeasts in their like freezer. It's crazy. So there's definitely, uh, you know, not a real big, you know, there's not a limit on bread. There's not just one type of bread. You know, it's like saying there's one type of yeast and that's not necessarily the true. And each, each one will give you different flavors. So with 100% bread beers, they ferment very similar to a Saccharomyces. It takes longer. One thing that um, I had read and it, is true with my one experience is that they're a rather clean flavor um, a lot of people think Brett makes a sour beer uh, that's not that's not the case most sour beers um, have lactobacillus and peocacus in it and both of those um, make this the, the, the true sourness that you know that real sour beer like if you ever had a uh, like a real sour Let's see, uh, like a La Folie is probably the wi most widely distributed beer I can think of by New Belgium. Um, that type of beer has Pediococcus and Lactobacillus. That one, that's what makes the uh, sourness. So what? So you might have heard like Brett is like a funky yeast or it creates a barnyard flavor or that type of stuff. And it can do that to a certain point, I think, on its own. Um, I'd say there's a slight funk on this one, but... I mean, man, I'm really stretching on it. So there's also Brettanomyces in a secondary. So say like a lot of Saisons will do that. They'll have Brett as a, you know, they'll do like a normal Saccharomyces fermentation of a Saison and then they'll add Brett in the secondary. And this is where you'll get the, the quote unquote Brett flavors that um, I, you know, kind of attribute to like a wild ale. If you see a wild ale and you taste it and you get like a horse blanket is what they call it. I don't know why they call it horse blanket. Horse blankets taste like, they smell like shit. So I don't know why they call it horse blanket, but kind of like a barnyard funk thing is what they say. But um, I definitely get funk. I like that, the term funk over horse blanket. I think that's kind of silly. But, uh, but one thing that Brett does is that it will clean up and it, I don't, I don't want to say clean up, but it creates the, it creates the classic funk flavors from the ale yeast byproduct. So when an ale yeast, um, you know, eats sugars, it produces alcohol and a bunch of other things. I don't know what, but the Brett will go through there and kind of, I guess I'm going to use the word clean up, even though there's nothing you need to clean up, but, um, it cleans up the ale and then that's where you get a lot of the funk. It also will eat sugars that Saccharomyces cannot. And that's when you get the really low attenuations where you have to wait, you know, four or five months before your, your, your beer is totally done fermenting. Um, so let's say you did a, uh, you know, a Saison and added Brett, um, in the secondary, um, uh, it could take three months before it to stop, um, you know, three, four months, maybe more, maybe less, um, before that, uh, Brettanomyces is done, um, cleaning up and eating after the Saccharomyces. So, and then Brettanomyces plays a, a really big role in a, a, a true sour beer. Um, Brettanomyces is kind of like the, the cleanup kid. Um, this is where it really kind of cleans up after different types of yeast and bacteria, especially. Um, Brettanomyces in conjunct, you pretty much, if there's Pediococcus, which is a, a bacteria, and Lactobacillus. Lactobacillus, you can do, like a Berlinovicin is Lactobacillus. Um, that's what gives it that tartness. If you ever had a Brunelone Weiss and that tartness is a lactobacillus. Uh, Pediococcus is more of that uh, sourness and not so much. But um, one other thing that like uh, uh, Pediococcus does is it creates a lot of diacetyl. Um, and on its own, it would just be this big nasty diacetyl, you know, piece of crap. 
you add Brett in there and Brett will go through and clean up all those byproducts and those, uh, all that diacetyl. So uh, Brett does a really good job and then it adds its own funk to it and gives it a different uh, layer of, uh, comple of complexity. But um, let's see, what else is there? Um, yeah, so just to wrap up, uh, I figured I'd talk about it a little bit. I've seen a few comments around that don't, um, that I had, you know, a year ago, I, I thought Brett was a bacteria. and um, So just some of the, the misconceptions that maybe other people have had that I had and just after a bunch of research and uh, so hopefully that clears up some information about Brett. Um, it's definitely worth using. It's uh, I mean, I'm, I plan on using more different strains and playing around with it some more. But um, it's really cool yeast to use. It's different. It's uh, um, yeah, it's just kind of fun. It totally changes a beer from what a normal ale yeast would. So, but it changes it not as much as you might think if, I don't know, but uh, anyways. So, all right, hopefully that cleared some things up. We'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. In there, um, not sour, but a little bit of acidity, something a fucking cat. No, sh I'm doing a video. Hold on. Okay, where was I? Good cat.